More than 30 million people from throughout the world visit Philadelphia annually, and most visit the very famous historic locations and artifacts of the American Revolution, such as Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell, located within the very walkable 75 acres known as Old City. However, there are many less famous locations in and around that small area that are also very important in telling the American story. Yet those often go unseen by visitors and even local residents. And I'd like to share them with you. Hi, my name's Marty. Thank you for joining me on this first episode of Philadelphia's Secret Revolution, Hidden in Plain Sight. My interest in visiting historic places started when I was in school in New York City and realized that a simple subway ride could take me to see places that I'd been learning about in school. Places like Francis Tavern, Washington's New York headquarters, in which I was able to stand at the table where he famously bid farewell to his officers. And now, living near Philadelphia, I can easily visit its historic sites including many that are not well known, but important nonetheless. In addition to historic buildings and locations, we'll visit neighborhoods, museums, statues, and monuments that tell the stories of individuals and communities during the period of the founding, as well as some that were before and after that period. We may also uncover the secret histories of some of the more famous locations. For today's walk, we'll visit Elfrid's Alley, a short block between Art Street to the south and Quarry Street to the north. It's bounded on the west by 2nd Street and east by Front Street. It was created in 1703 to improve access to the Delaware River waterfront on the east, which was the center of Philadelphia's business and trade during the 18th century. The street is a National Historic Landmark where Philadelphians have resided continually throughout the past three centuries, and it continues to be a thriving residential neighborhood to this day. Its first houses were built in 1724. The early residents included shipwrights, seamstresses, blacksmiths, furniture makers and teachers, among other occupations and trades. During the course of the 19th and 20th centuries, it was the home of several waves of immigrants from different regions of Europe, as well as migrants from the southern United States. We'll take a quick walk through Alfred Sally, first heading east from 2nd Street to Front Street, and then back to 2nd Street. We'll pause at a few houses whose stories can provide some insights into 300 years of American history. The first house near the corner of 2nd Street is number 139, which sits on a property originally owned by Jeremiah Alfred, a silversmith after whom the street was named. But the street's name was changed in 1897 when the city of Philadelphia designated it as the 100 block of Cherry Street. Fortunately, during the 1930s, preservationists became very active, and in 1937, their efforts led to the restoration of the Alfred's Alley name. Number 135 was built over a cart path, and the large window you see encloses what was once the entrance to the cart path. It was once the home of John Unga, a French immigrant who was one of the first immigrants to become a naturalized American citizen. During a period before we had significant immigration laws and naturalization was relatively uncommon. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, it was occupied by a succession of German and Irish immigrants, and then black migrants from the South during the 1930s. Next, we'll take a quick walk to Bladen's Court, which runs perpendicular to the alley and parallel to Front Street. The houses you'll see were originally built by their adjacent property owners as rental homes. Their residents once included William Rush and Abraham Carlyle, who were related by marriage but on opposite sides of the revolution. While Rush was a patriot, Carlyle was a loyalist who worked for the British during the 1777 occupation of Philadelphia. In 1778, Carlyle was tried in an American court convicted of treason and executed by hanging. 
The red water pump you see at the end of the street is a reconstruction of the type of pump that would have been on this well during the 18th century. Quickly exiting Bladen's Court, we'll continue heading east toward Front Street. The brick wall you see along Front Street was built for noise abatement when Interstate 95 was constructed during the 20th century. Let's turn around now and head west. We'll pass numbers 120 and 122, which were built between 1724 and 1728 and are the oldest homes on the street. Numbers 124 and 126 were built by Jeremiah Alfred in 1755. Mary Smith purchased them in 1762 to both live in and to run a dressmaking business with another seamstress, Sarah Melton. These houses now contain the Alfred's Alley Museum, operated by the Alfred's Alley Association. Well, as you can see, we're back at Second Street where we started our walk. And that concludes our visit to Alfred's Alley. I hope you enjoyed it. In the future, we'll walk to places like the Military Museum at New Hall and to Carpenter's Hall where the First Continental Congress was held in 1774. I hope you'll join me. You can learn more about Alfred's Alley at alfredsalley.org.